right, let's go have an amazing day, guys. Oh, yes, let's do it. Everglades National Park was established in 1947 to preserve the natural landscape and to prevent further development and degradation of its land, plants, and animals. Originally, the landscape of Florida allowed the water to flow south in a shallow, slow-moving sheet. This sheet flow supported many different aquatic habitats, such as sloughs, sawgrass marshes, hardwood hammocks, and mangrove forests, until it flowed out into the estuaries of Biscayne Bay, the 10,000 Islands, and Florida Bay. In the early 1900s, settlers and developers began transforming the land for farming and housing, which changed the natural sheet flow forever, disturbing the balanced ecosystem and the plethora of species it supports. There is a plan to restore, preserve, and protect the South Florida ecosystem, and the IGFA has been part of Everglades restoration efforts since 2015 because this is much more than a Florida problem. The Everglades and the fisheries it supports are a destination for visiting anglers from around the world. Everglades National Park is still a beautiful national treasure where many people love to explore and many recreational anglers love to fish. So let's introduce you to some of the species that call this home and some of the habitats in which they reside. Hello anglers, this is Lisa here again with the IGFA. Boy, do we have a special treat for you for this fishing field trip. Uh, we are back out with Captain Elmer with Rhino Diaries Adventures. And also today we have Zach from the IGFA. He's our angler recognition coordinator. And today, where are we Elmer? We are in Everglades National Park, Flamingo. So we're in the east entrance. Uh, we're in the back country and the sun is not even up yet. And we're already here and we're getting ready to catch some juvenile tarpon. It's gonna be tarpon fun right now. And then we're gonna relaunch the boat on the outside and go fish the Keys for some redfish on the flats. Awesome. Sounds like a good day, huh? That's yeah. it. All right, let's brave the mosquitoes. Let's get our lines in the water and let's try to catch some tarpon. Let's catch some fish. Does one wanna fly and one wanna um, use the, the jig? I'll throw the jig just to uh, start. The I could throw the fly, yeah. Can I throw the fly? Yeah, sure. sure. With fly fishing, you need to let out enough line and then make one or two false casts to get the line to shoot out to where you'd like it to go. With your false casts, you want to aim for the 10 o'clock to the one or two o'clock position. Make tight loops, accelerate to a stop backward and then again forward. And on your forward cast, stop to shoot the line. As you strip in to retrieve the line, your fingers with the rod hand are acting as the bail to help set the hook when you get a strike. Get this hand ready immediately after you shoot the line as a fish could strike when the fly lands on the water. Your other hand strips in the line and controls the speed and movement of your fly in the water. Be sure to keep your rod tip pointing down toward the water and keep the fly line in line with your rod. When fishing on a flats boat, the fly angler will fish from the bow because of the forward and back casts. The angler fishing with a spinning rod can fish from the sides and back of the boat to avoid the angler who is fly fishing. Are they kind of like in there? They're followed up with the boat? Oh yeah, we'll fish on, Snooky. fish on! Snooky, all right! All right. Woohoo! All right. Ten ninety three. All right. Oh, we're getting. You're gonna learn. Woohoo! Yes. Oh my god, nice are you pass. kidding me? Yeah, nice You're that good? <laughs> oh my lord. Yeah. Oh, this is great. Yes, yeah, so, so what we're doing is uh, we're making some casts kind of by these little cuts and coves 
Um, Zach is using a spinning rod and reel with a jig on it, a, a black and purple jig. And he's not jigging it like, like typical. Um, what he's doing is just kind of trying to keep the rod tip high a little bit and just uh, kind of vibrating the tip of the rod to keep that jig kind of at the surface to attract the tarpon. I'm using uh, the fly rod, a nine weight fly rod. And we have a, an, another black and purple uh, fly at the tip of that. And we did have some good luck, just caught a snook on it. Uh, so we see some, some fish kind of, kind of rolling up ahead too. So, all right, fish on, lines in the water. I forgot to mention, we have Captain Elmer up there pulling, <laughs> pulling around. <laughs> yep, we're just gonna kind of make our way up and down this, this tree line right here. Perfect, perfect. Pulling a flats boat helps anglers fish for species in shallow or clear water. The primary benefit of pulling is that it's nearly silent, so it helps us get close to the tree line where these fish are without spooking them. Yeah, from under there, right? Tarpon will just pass by the cast at 11 o'clock. What does that mean? A tarpon just rolled at 11 o'clock. Well, when you're on a flats boat, clock direction is very important. If the angler is on the bow, the captain will often say a time and a distance as they have a higher viewpoint on the polling platform and can see the fish better. As the angler, get used to these clock directions. Staring straight ahead from the bow, if the captain says nine o'clock, you want to make your cast directly to the left or port side. If the captain says three o'clock, you want to make your cast to the right or starboard side. So, tarpon rolling at 11 o'clock means the captain just saw rings on the surface up ahead and the angler should make a cast just to the left of straight in front of you, which that would be 12 o'clock. Oh, tarpon! Oh, oh that, was tarpon. that was a tarpon! Oh, oh no, he took my fly! Oh no! Oh, I saw him! Oh, you had it. So, when that happens, give it a pop. Yeah. And once let you stick run. him, let him go. And yeah. just like let the line go loose, and he'll take it. Yeah, he, he got you. Hey, you, you got a tarpon on. <laughs> that was good. Let's get you, let's get you on, another one. <laughs> Yeah, that was nice. He just came yeah. out of there. Isn't that great? That's yeah. cool. That's Good nice. job. I saw him come up and take it. You saw him come up? Yes. Mm. Yeah. He, uh, he frayed it a little. He did? I... Yeah, you might want to always check the line because sometimes the fish frays it or takes it into the mangrove roots or something. So if you feel any frays, you might want to uh, swap out that line. Yep. Mm. Oh. Yeah, that was cool. That was cool. Awesome. Hey, if you get the tarpon, that's two out of the three. Yeah. Grand Slam. Inch or Grand Slam. Is that a fish, fish bowl? Yeah, that he was, took it, he that took was it like solid. It was a solid hit, eh? That's a big hit. Oh, big hit. Straight ahead of us, in the shadow. Yeah, they're all popping right up. Yep. Yeah. Oh, another one. Okay, they're here, guys. Yeah. They are here. Oh, another one. Yeah. Yep, they're here. We found them. It's full. All right, it's tarpon time. We finally found them. They are all rolling. See them all? They're all rolling, all in the shadow. Let's start here, right in front on the left, in this little cove, and then we'll work our way. Lisa, you're about to catch your first tarpon on fly. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Bow to the king. Bow to the king. Awesome, Lisa! Woo! Tarpon on fly! Should I reel in? Or yeah, just, no, just uh, hand stripping in, in yep. All and right. then when he wants to run, you just like loosen up your fingers. Oh! oh. You have a tarpon! You have a tarpon! Oh my god. Oh. That was a nice fish. That was a nice fish. Yeah, yeah. probably 20 pounds. Oh, man. Oh, man. Good job. You're getting closer and closer. You're on. Yes. Snook. Guys, the fish are here. This is where it is in the bay. Nice snuff, nice snuff. Nice 
It's not nice. Yeah. Beautiful ice pick. Yeah. Oh, nice tarpon. Good. Strip it. Keep your rod tip low. Keep your rod tip low. Yep. There you go. 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 Nice. What a jump. What a jump. I am so excited. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Oh, I'm so excited. All right. Fantastic. All right. Congratulations. You ready to release Yes, him? I'm ready All to right, release him. All right, buddy. Nice and slow. Right over here. Here you go. There it is. Nice. Tarpon number. Did you see that jump? Did you see that jump? Did you? Nice. You stuck him. Good. You're both on. Doubles. 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 We got doubles. We got doubles. Two tarpon on at the same time. Tarpon fishing regulations in Florida require the angler to release the fish unless you're in possession of a specific harvest tag with the intent of earning an IGFA world record. These fish were all juvenile tarpon, so we were able to bring them out of the water. However, large tarpon over 40 inches are to remain in the water to limit stress on the fish when handling. Alright, look at that. Nice. Ah, it's so beautiful. Oh, big one just rolled up there. Oh my lord. Big fish, guys. There you go. Oh, he's on. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, snuck, snuck. oh, nice snook. Nice snook. Nice snook. Nice snook. Nice Yours looked like it was over slow. Yeah, I'm starting to realize that. Yeah. Nice. It was, it, he gill plated you. Yeah. Oh, no, for sure. Why yeah. that? Yeah, he looked, he, was, he looked all of 30 inches. Yeah. They're here. Oh, oh beautiful. Lisa, oh, how oh, pretty is oh, that oh, fish? Oh, oh. I think he swallowed the fly, though. All right. Yeah, nice right. snook. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Beautiful fish. We're still working this bank right here, this tree line of mangrove trees. Now, mangrove trees are a great tree here in Everglades National Park. The red mangrove, they have these prop roots that come down into the water and it creates a very good nursery for fish. It holds a lot of bait fish, so that's why we're catching a lot of these uh, snook and baby tarpon because they're just kind of cruising in here in the mangrove roots and trying to catch up uh, those bait fish. So it's a great spot. You can see kind of where the, where the shadow is. That's where they're hanging out and feeding on those bait fish. So we're just putting our casts in there and we've been getting hits like crazy. So let's uh, keep fishing. Fish are on, tarpon and snook. Are we on, oh, are we on, are we on? Oh, keep your rod low, keep oh, your rod low. Nice, 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 oh, nice, 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 nice. Look tarpon. at that, look at that. Nice tarpon, nice tarpon. Oh. You pulled him out, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice yeah, fish. Yeah. Whoa, look at nice. that fish. Look at that fish. Oh, nice fish. Oh, oh, look at that fish. Like 15. Oh, Come on, Zach. Fish. Come on, Zach. Awesome, Zach. Awesome. Where is he? Where is he? I'm trying to get him on this side. Whoa! Some fish. Oh, look at that fish. Beautiful look at that fish. beautiful. Beautiful fish. All right, you got it, Zach. I got it. Oh, man. This is awesome. Yes. Zach on a camera, baby. Come on, Zach. Beautiful. Awesome. Look at that. Where is he? Where is he? Oh, that's a nice That's a, that's a nice fish. fish. That's yeah. a very nice fish, yeah. Nice. Oh, look at that beauty. Oh my goodness. Look it. I still got some bite. Oh! Nice. Awesome! Let me touch that leader. I did touch yeah, the leader already. Yeah, yeah, so that counts as a catch. Three for three. Come on, Zach. Come on. Beautiful Let's fish. bring him in. That's a nice fish. I want the... You want that picture? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at that beauty. Look at that beauty. Hey, yeah. buddy. Look at that. Oh, so. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Come on, we want the photo. 
Okay. Nice fish. Nice. Fish, Look man. at that. Congratulations. Exciting way to end our first spot. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna move on to our next spot. All right, but tarpon and snook, fish on! Woohoo! Woo! Yes! <laughs> we had a great time fishing the mangrove ecosystem of Everglades National Park, but now it's time to head to the Gulf side and fish other habitats. We're still targeting snook, but in the seagrass we can also target redfish, spotted sea trout, and other saltwater species. In the backcountry, the salinity of the water is more fresh, sometimes reading only 12 to 14 parts per thousand. In the Gulf or Atlantic side, it is more salt, and today the salinity read over 40 parts per thousand. That is very high as the Atlantic Ocean is typically around 32 to 35 parts per thousand. But the tidal change can affect salinity levels and thus affect the fishing because some fish cannot tolerate those conditions. Tarpon and snook can tolerate various fresh and saltwater levels though, so we will see if we can catch them again in our next spot. So you're gonna, let's say we see a mud, like there's a mud right there, okay? You see it? There's a mud. I'm gonna cast at the mud just before my jig hits the water, I'm gonna Lock the bail and lift the rod up so that jig doesn't have time to fall. Okay. So it's like this. See how it's right there? Yeah. Yep. And then I'm going to drop it in the mud. Wiggle it a few times and then bring it back out. And I can see it, so I'm watching it come back. And I got some, I got a little bit of weeds on it. When you okay. say mud, are you referring to potholes or are you referring uh, to like No. So a pothole is going to be this light color. Yeah. Mud is going to look like, like a bunch of chocolate milk. Yeah. Like that right there, you can see the pothole. Yep. And there it was like milky, like there's some milkiness there. Okay, yeah. A long milky trail really means it's a stingray, okay. but redfish yeah. will follow. Okay. And, and then if you see too, a yeah. round mud, a small one, that's one redfish. If you see a bigger round mud, this is a lot of redfish feeding. Okay. So we're just using okay the jig head. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay, and then here's the gulp swatter bait. Okay, look at all those different uh, different color uh, swim baits that we could use. Okay, got some white ones with some chartreuse tails. Okay, got some red ones. Kind of look like little mini redfish there. Even got some shrimp too. That could work good. To rig the swim bait, insert the head first until the bend of the hook, then push the hook through the body. You then slide it up past the jig collar. This little notch is designed to hold the soft plastic onto the hook. The technique here would be to cast past the pothole and allow the lure to fall in. The fish are positioned inside the pothole to ambush bait fish as they wash over the flats with the tide. Oh, you're on! Yes. Redfish! Yes. What? Oh, snook, snook! 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 Yeah. You snook! We helped Captain Elmer get to his 1100th snook for the season, but our day did not end there. Now, in order to keep a snook based on size for the Gulf and Monroe County, which is where we were fishing, the fish had to be between 28 and 33 inches. This is called a slot limit, no less than 28 or more than 33 inches. 
However, if we keep reading the regulations, a snook permit is required to harvest this species. I personally did not have a snook permit, so I could not keep any of these fish we caught today. That's okay though, because we had quite the fun time catching and releasing these fish. Nice fish, help me. Wow. Oh, that's perfect for me. You put it right in the corner of the mouth. Yeah, perfect. Give me a little striper. <laughs> Nice, beautiful fish. You just flip that. Like you just flip your rod. While you're having fun fishing, don't forget to take a look around because you never know who will stop by for a visit. Whenever you venture out on the water with a boat, please pay attention and slow down to avoid animal strikes. Manatees and sea turtles often fall victim to boat strikes as you can see with this manatee, as it has a white scar on its back from a previous strike. After we said goodbye to the manatees, it was off to spot number three for the day. For this spot, we fished a deep channel surrounded by shallower flats. There could be some really big snook, redfish, or tarpon in this channel. So right now we have the current uh, coming at us, right? It's the bottom of the outgoing tide, but it's still coming strong. So I'll cast up current, this cast up current i'll let it sink i know it's six seven feet deep there so i'll let it sink five six seconds like a second per foot whatever okay and then uh and then i just lift it a little bit and on just yeah like, nice just, like that. just lifting it <laughs> yeah it works every time i swear <laughs> every single time wow a redfish just kidding it's a jack Tell me, right no, here is where that big snow. Wait, wait. That I'm on. Uh, you're on? Nice. Oh, nice. geez, guys. All right, all right, all right. Oh, wow, that's a big Woo. fish. That's a nice fish. Look at that. All this right. is where that monster was. Oh. You, you wouldn't tell from the hook set, though. You set the hook and you're just like, oh, there's a fish. It started running. Yeah. Oh, he's going to oh. right we'll grab him. Oh. No, you're good, you're good. He's big. Oh, there he is. Oh, look at him. Oh, wow, big snook. You got the net? Holy smokes, guys. Guys, we just got a monster. Holy smokes. Look at the size of that, dude. I told you the big snook right here. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. Guys, I have the official measuring device. You do? Okay. On a gulp. On a gulp. Okay. Sit at 80. Two. Do you pinch the tail for this or no? It's a fork. So oh, the fork. Yeah, okay. you're right there, 82. 82 centimeters. Wow. That's okay, a ready? nice fish, yeah. Here, here, nice we'll fish. Seat, and we'll do oh, the yeah, tail pinch. pinch tail? It's a 34. 34. Wow. Beautiful nice fish. fish. There you go, buddy. You go. You okay? Alright. Go get it. Good job. That go in here. Got a nice, nice fish. fish coming. Nice fish. Nice fish. Let's see here. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Oh, nice. Nice. Oh, look at that. Oh, big. Look, look big, at that. Big, big, big. In the oh, net. Oh, in the oh, net. Nice. Woohoo. Oh, okay. Don't fall off the boat, Lisa. Don't fall off the boat. Nice. Look at that fish. Look at that. On the swim bait. Nice, nice, nice! Look at that You're fish! You're killing it! <laughs> awesome! Woohoo! This is incredible. Another big fish, here we go. This is unbelievable. What are you thinking, Lisa? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Awesome! Another big snook! I think this is bigger than mine. Yeah. Yeah. How you feeling? First tarpon on fly. Monster snook. Unbelievable.
Unbelievable. Here he comes. Oh! oh. oh. That's got to be your biggest snook. Come that's on. A, that's biggest that's mine. My, that's my biggest snook. Oh oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Look at the size of this oh, wow. snook. Let's see here. This is ridiculous. Okay, try to hold oh, on. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. my goodness. Wow. Oh, oh, you got him? Yep. Wow. Oh, good. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, All right. It is important to revive fish after a long fight, especially big fish. This allows the fish to regain their energy and escape any nearby predators like sharks. Be patient and give them time as they build up a lot of lactic acid during the fight. When they're ready, they'll let you know and swim off. Our fun day on the water was not over yet as we fished every last possible second of our day with Captain Elmer. To close out the day, we fished another grass flat and landed several different species. Florida is home to seven different species of seagrass. The two most common seagrasses can be seen here, turtle grass, the broad, more ribbon-like leaves, and manatee grass, the thinner, more cylindrical leaves. Seagrass provides food for many animals, feeding grounds for others, and refuge for the prey like crabs, shrimp, sea urchins, and baitfish. All right, got a nice little spotted sea trout right here. Very nice. Spot. Spotted oh, sea trout right oh, here. Okay, so just gotta be careful because they have uh, yeah. they have very sharp teeth. Okay. All right. So we will take with the pliers. Yep. Yep. I'm coming. Yeah. See his yeah. He has very sharp teeth. Spotted sea trout. All right. Very nice. Buddy. Very nice. At this spot, we had two great catches, the spotted sea trout and the infamous plastic water bottle. As anglers, let's all try to kick plastic and use reusable water bottles to help keep our fishing spots cleaner than when we arrived. All right, so incredible day today. Um, we, uh, let me tell you a little bit about the pattern we chose. And a pattern is basically, when we look at the weather and the tide, we want to hit the spots at the right time of the day to have the best chances of catching a fish. So in this area of the grass flats, you have grass flats and then you have these cuts and these channels in between all these grass flats. So what we want to do is as the tides, as it's low, we might fish all of these little channels and cuts because there's no water in the flats, they're drained. It's, it looks like grass and there's birds walking on them. So We'll fish the channels in four or five feet of water and we'll look for areas where cooler water down low in the summertime where the big fish can sit. And, uh, and we did today. We got those three huge snook um, back to back in exactly that, that, that instant, that pattern we spoke about. Um, as the tide starts to rise, we're going to come into these flats with the current and pull looking for redfish for snook. And what we're looking for is any potholes We'll, we'll cast into the potholes, or if we see any puffs of smoke. If you see a long trail of smoke, it's typically a stingray, so be careful. Um, but there could be some fish on the back side of that stingray. Uh, typically, we're looking for these little puffs of smoke. Or you might see one redfish swim by, and they'll come very close to the boat because we're in six inches to a foot of water. But you may see a bunch of redfish, and you might see a wake. It looks like a boat's going by, but it might be 30 or 40 redfish. Um, 
casting on the outside of those schools and then finally casting into the middle. So uh, we haven't caught a redfish today, but we've caught a lot of snook. We hit snook number 1100 and we, what, we get five, five tarpon. Yeah. So it's uh, nice. it a great, beautiful day. Well, anglers, uh, we are done for the day. We had a beautiful day fishing. We caught so many different species of fish. First fish. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. yeah. Did, did you guys have fun? Uh, <laughs> one of the best fishing days of my life, to be honest with you. Thank you so much, Captain Elmer, for taking us out again. My pleasure. It was such an amazing day, so we're going to pack it up and say goodbye for next time. Take care. We'll see you soon. After a great day of fishing, wherever you go fishing, make sure you pack it in and pack it out to leave no trace, only memories.